Hey guys, welcome back. So, I am uh, getting ready to paint a bunch of stuff in the next couple weeks, and I'm gonna have my whole area set up for lots of painting. I figured it would be a good time to finally paint these um, 3D printed helmets that were modeled by Sean Fields. I've got three of them here. I've got um, two, <laughs> one in a bag, uh, two Shore Trooper helmets from Rogue One and a tank driver helmet from Rogue One, which you can see is partially assembled. Um, so I am stripping off all the hot glue, which you maybe saw in a previous video, and reassembling these partially reassembling i'll get into that in a second reassembling these things for painting um i was going to do a whole video on using the different super glues and kickers and tricks for using super glue and then literally as i'm getting ready to set this up i have youtube running in the background i see a video of um a guy was doing tests painting these little faces little heads that he 3d printed their pla and he treated some with acetone and some without and showed the difference. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because uh, I thought it was kind of a cool, cool thing. Just watched it for a second. And the next video that played was from Thomas Sandlander. So if you're into 3D printing stuff, you good chance you're subscribed to his channel because he does like almost everything he does is 3D printed, 3D print topics, 3D printing topics, 3D printing topics. And he got into can you weld can you weld PLA with acetone which I was always told that you couldn't I was told that was reserved for ABS and when I first got my printer I actually took PLA pieces and put them in acetone and they didn't melt now this was just scrap so once I it's not melting I just threw it away I didn't look at it to see what was going on apparently you can weld PLA the same way you can weld at, uh, ABS parts I probably screwed that up a minute ago which is freaking awesome because I hate working with ABS. It's it's really fickle and warps really easy and it's like 60% of my prints come out right and the other ones are always have something weird going on. But PLA prints really, really great all the time. And if you can weld it with acetone, that's amazing. So, of course, I ran out and I did a test. So I've got this piece here, which looks is the opposite of this guy. So there's like an outer wall kind of goes inside the helmet. There's a little strip that glues together like this and I was gonna see if the acetone works. So I stuck this one together and it is super super strong. It's just bonded with acetone. So it changes everything. Now this whole video is gonna be different. So we're gonna do a part here with acetone. This is all PLA. Um, we've got these, this is the other cheek piece here, whatever you call this, uh, the snout on the tank trooper. All this was glued together with super glue. I'll still go into that in a minute, but we're gonna do this one with some acetone because why not, right? <clears throat> so let me get this out of the way. We go into a few things here about cleanup and printing. Um, since these parts are getting uh, painted, I want them to be nice and clean before I start. I'm trying to get these uh, clean up as, as best as I can. So I'm going to do a quick file of the inside here just to make sure there's no boogers and that the pieces fit together as well as they can. Um, also this little edge at the bottom. And this is this part's a really great candidate for the acetone because it's this long, these long uh, sections that interact with each other, but Gluing these and getting them to line up the way you want quickly can be difficult, but working with acetone can make this very easy. So, again, doing a little cleanup on here. Make sure there's no boogers in here that I don't want. And I'll get into some more of this in a second too about um, prepping parts for prints for painting because. A lot of people will just assemble the entire 3D model when they're done. When they, once they print it, they'll just assemble the whole thing and paint it, um, which is fine. But for certain shapes, it can be much, much easier to paint and clean up if you don't assemble the whole thing in one shot. So, okay, so here we go. Got this piece together. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just gonna line the parts up how I think they look best. Get them nice and flush the way that I want. 
And I'm basically just going to hold them in place while I do this. Make sure that they are as close to perfect as I can get them. Uh, 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 uh. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to get out my acetone. Now, quick tip. A lot of times these acetone canisters come with like these childproof plastic lids. If you don't have any kids kicking around, just cut that dumb thing off. You can take some, some bolt cutters and just snip it and then it makes it easy to open the cans. You don't have to fumble with it when you're in a hurry. Um, so use just a little paintbrush and I'm gonna get a little acetone on the brush. I'm just gonna run it down the seam. Now, I could have brushed this on before I attach the parts, but thing is acetone will will find all of those uh, all the crevices really really easily so it's gonna work its way back in there I'm not worried about that I'm um, also gonna hit the inside of this one get it kind of wet so that it'll drip down again super excited probably not the healthiest place to do this inside my room here but uh, I got to do it for the video I typically would do this outside. Um, let's see. Let's give it one more pass. Now, I didn't need very much when I did that other part. It went very easily, so that was pretty cool. Um, the cap back on nice and snug. <clears throat> and the other part, I didn't have to wait very long. You can feel the surface kind of gets a little bit sticky, and you get some little like white boogers here, and it feels like it's together. Again, I'm gonna give it a few minutes to to properly set up, just in case it's not. But um, there it is. It's 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 welded together. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm giving it a little pressure here, and I don't want to push it too hard. Push it. I don't want to push it too hard. Um, and look at that. It seems to work great. So. Yeah, so that changed my whole video. I was going to do it, talk about doing all this same work with um, super glues and whatnot, but I'm, I love working with acetone. It's one of my favorite things about ABS, but now that I can do it with PLA, now that I know that I can do it with PLA, it's a game changer. Um, however, all these super glues still have uh, well, plenty of use when making um, these 3D printed parts, so we'll go into that right now. Uh, so... Where to start? So all this was glued together with super glue, and it's totally sturdy. It's really strong. Um, it works great. Now, typically, when I'm gluing together 3D printed parts like this, I would just give the surface a little sand with some very rough sandpaper. I mean, this is like I don't know, 60 grit maybe. It's like really, really rough stuff. Uh, and just do like a little, a little hit on the corresponding edges, just to make sure that it's got some teeth, something to grab onto. And also get rid of any boogers because on the on the edges of the prints there will be little spots where when the printer hits a corner it makes a little tiny bump out and I always try to sand that down just a little bit so that the parts meet together better. It's a little, it might not seem like much, but when you are assembling a whole thing and there's every little edge has a tiny little bump, it adds up. So by the time you get from one side to the other, you might be pretty far off of where you should be size wise. So like if I was assembling like the top of a helmet, for example, and then it needed to plug into another piece, if it's off, it might not fit. Like it might look fine all together, but once you put the pieces together, it could be totally wrong. Um, but yeah, this acetone thing, I am freaking amazed. This is so good. So awesome. Um, let's see. So from some tricks with the super glue. Now, all these glues um, are, what is it? Cyanoacrylate, I think is what stuff is called, the ingredient. Let me look on here. Um, so they're typically, they're referred to as CA glue. Um, cyanoacrylate is the is the ingredient that is in these. Like a lot of super glues contain this. Um, when they contain the cyanoacrylate, which I'm probably saying wrong, you can use a kicker. I usually use zip kicker. This is all I have on hand at the moment, which is just like a quick fix, like spray uh, accelerator activator as they call it um, when you use the CA glue and you put it down 
it's glues pretty quick but if you spray this on there it'll cure almost instantly the zip kicker brand is the fastest one i've used so far the second it you spray it it's cured which is very very handy um and there's some other tricks too like you can use uh baking soda and use it almost like a filler so if i put some glue down let me give you an example find a spot here so like if you have little seams and stuff there are a couple ways to fill them using super glue uh, one is you can take the glue let me see if i have a piece here that is ready to rock actually the piece i just glued with the with the acetone i'm going to do the patching with this how about that so we're going to do two different ways you can take some of your glue this is the gorilla glue brand that means it's essentially the same stuff um, Zappa Gap is what I always have on hand as well, and the, the Zappa Gap is same stuff, but just I can get it in a bigger bottle. So you can take your regular, regular old super glue and put a bead into a seam line. Let's hope that acetone doesn't make this stuff kick off too fast. Just put a little bead in the seam like that, and if I was gluing the parts together, I would just use some kicker and kick it off. But since I'm going to make uh, a little bit of a filler here, I'm going to use baking soda and a little popsicle stick here, tongue depressor, and just sprinkle it on the hot on the hot glue on the super glue, the CA glue, and the baking soda basically will make the glue kick off immediately just like the kicker so that's already hardened right now um, and it kind of acts like a filler so you can sand it this way isn't as clean always as some other ways but this sands pretty easy so it's not a big deal but another way we can do this you may have seen before I have a piece of silicone here um, you can use baby powder I've used this lots of times this is going to give you the same kind of filler effect except um, it won't kick off right away so what you do, you take your super glue, put a little dot on your whatever your board. You don't have to use silicone. Silicone is just awesome. So I like to use for this either a popsicle stick, which has been cut. I don't know if I have a blade here, of course. No, probably not. Uh, or a uh, shish kebab skewer. Skewers I love. I always have these on hand. We're going to mix this with baby powder. And... Lots of people have covered this before, but I'm just going to do it anyway, just in case you haven't seen it. And you can basically make like a little paste. And you can control how thick it is, and it doesn't dry immediately, which is handy. So you can work with it a little bit. So you mix up a little bit of a paste. Looks like a little booger. Now this is the stuff that's already, I already hit. I'm going to flip it over to, no, I'll just do the front side. So I only did half with with the baking soda. Now this side we're using baby powder and you can see it's a little more workable like like a Bondo almost. So you can really get this into the seams and kind of put it where you want it to go. Which both ways are very handy depending on what you're doing. I guess my Bluetooth speaker just turned off. That's cool. Um, so you can see this is a little more controllable. And then it will stay kind of look it'll dry eventually on its own but it'll stay movable whereas this stuff the second i put that baking soda it cured immediately so now i'm going to use a little bit of the kicker and just hit the surface and this kicker again isn't as fast but uh it's already now like it's kicking off so that'll dry and then we can sand it down and get rid of that seam so even though this whole video was supposed to be about gluing everything together with these kind of glues um and it changed literally minutes before i started this video um super glues are still very i almost said super handy super glues are super handy uh super glues are very handy for filling in these seams and everything and um one aspect i wanted to talk about too let me put this to the side is when assembling a helmet like this or any 3d printed part what i would do i'll show you this one's a little further along I would assemble pieces at uh, a few pieces at a time. Like this is kind of like the the collar, not the collar, the the snout ish snout, and then the the ring. I don't know what you, these pieces have names. I don't know what they're called. And then so like this 
mouth section, this, this front here of the face, this front of the snout, guys, I don't know what these parts are called, um, goes in here like this. Now, I could glue this right now, and it would be great. However, I'm going to leave this out until after paint because there's this edge here that returns, and it needs a lot of cleanup. It's pretty rough, and if I glue this together, cleaning this up is going to be way more difficult because I'm going to have to get into a get into these little corners here, which is a super pain in the ace. So if I can avoid getting into corner spaces as much as possible, that's great. So basically I'm going to do, um, see how the pieces are set up here. I'll probably paint them like this. So I've got the top of the helmet, which is two pieces. I will paint these separately and assemble them because again, when these are assembled, there is a big gap down in here that's going to be very hard to get to uh, with sandpaper so um, you know I got to clean it separately probably going to get these all assembled and at least primered and cleaned and then reassemble them and then I'll probably glue it with the super glue to hold everything together and I may back it with some epoxamite or some um, uh, what's a XTC 3D by smooth on which is like an epoxy coating I will use it on the inside not the outside I'm going to do a whole video on why I am stopping uh, using that on most prints for the outside of the print. It's, it smooths it, but it's a giant pain to clean it up. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess the whole point of this video is you can weld stuff with acetone, weld PLA parts with acetone. That's new to me as of minutes ago, so I'm quite excited about that. Um, anyway, hopefully some of these tips were helpful to somebody. I'm going to get back to work on this so that I can get back to real work. And I will see you kids soon. Later!